some game you like to invoke share your papers and numbers friends with an unfair she gave to us. We will sing it together. admire your stamina for the last day stayed for the last day of this conference. Somehow this knowledge of integral paradigm has connected us of this on this Valentine's Day I just feel okay, okay I think I, I, now it's better yeah. So it's symbolic very I didn't know from today's Valentine's, Valentine's Day. So we're all in love with this knowledge of integral paradigm. We are here. Um, Vladimir asked me to talk about applying integral paradigm of knowledge at work setting and uh, in the context of the world. Um, let me, and then, how does this work? Yeah. Um, and what actually draw me here, as with second day we had a, a short conversation about what draw me here has to do with the attraction, attraction to this knowledge and also how this knowledge can be applied for our own personal growth, for our own sadhana. And the last aspect is about how to integrate this work in knowledge into the work setting. <laughs> And so APK in the work, the work, the, t the field of work I'm busy with is very much in businesses, entrepreneurship, and in educational field. Um, I've been in this field for the last 20 years, but there's a big divide between, bef between the 10 years ago before I entered into the teaching and on work of Sri Aurobindo and Mother. Um, when I was working the first 10 years, somehow I always felt whatever knowledge I apply with my work in these fields, in consulting work, in educational work, is that knowledge is always partial. Somehow the knowledge existence is always in focusing on the surface, you know, the organization structure, the statements, but inside of that, what is the meaning of that? How is that lived? How is that engaged with you know, the deeper side, the intangible side of the organization, but yet intangible side is so important that determines how the organization go, grows sustainably. I also noticed that knowledge is not only on the surface. Whatever I'm using, somehow I feel it is not sustainable to help company or organizations to grow. And there's also aspect of 
partial knowledge. So it's always things are separated. So when we talk about some, there are some business issues where you ask, talk to people, then you start with people. But organization, not only people, it's all about task. Do we have the right understanding about task? Or we have to set up new structure, but structure doesn't help us to accomplish alone. You need also commitment, intention, and values of the people. So all this, I feel that something was not whole. And also one observation is around people were treating organization or educational institutes or work we're doing as fixed, a static. This is the way we do it. And culture is like that, or national culture, organization culture, so for us to hold on. And I feel, intuitively, I feel, no, everything is in developmental process. And if we have this perspective, we enter into the organization or do our own work, and everything what we are doing become a means for helping the developmental stages from one level to another level. So then we have different perspective in working. So I was struggling with this, both in my pr professional life, but also my inner life around who I am. When I'm doing a work, entering into an organization, or doing my own work, building our own company, who I am will determine type of organization I'm going to create, relationship I'm going to have. So all these questions, strugglings, observations, get clarified when I enter into Surabindo Mother's Teaching. And suddenly all this perspective, the knowledge, how to deal with this work and knowledge, how to deal with ourselves and how to integrate them. So today's theme is about how do that in integration process taking place. So my goal is very much to share with you that personal journey and, uh, and learn from you and to exchange how we have been applying, our firm have been applying this in different parts of the world. Um, so I will start with that perspective. What does integral knowledge, integral development mean for me, for my work, how I've been applying? And then I will, second part, I will share with you how I have been applying integral paradigm knowledge of this faculty of consciousness in the work with ourselves and with our clients. Is that okay? Is my English understandable? Okay, I don't need to switch to Chinese. Um, uh, a little bit of my background, you know, looking at me, I'm, I'm made in China. I'm, I was really studying law, practice law. I taught law in China, and 25 years ago, because of this loving affair with that Dutch man, and I moved to the Netherlands. So the last 25 years, I've been living in Holland with him and my mom. Um, um, the, so the work I've been doing is very much all these different parts of, of the world. And, uh, Recently, last two years, have been involved with APK work in, in Oroville with Vladimir and Rod and Lazzo, Aurelio. Um, so, so um, I want to start with a um, uh, 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 quote of Sri Aurobindo from Synthesis of Yoga. And he is talking about the four aids for city, for perfection for yoga city. But I see the relevance of these four aids for everything what we do when we strive for perfection in our work and for our own personal development. So not, not, everyone, not everyone is destined to be yogi, but each of, one, each of us can aspire to live the, the fullest of ourselves and reach that perfection. And he gave really the tools, the aids. So if you do like that, whatever you want to achieve in perfection, you will get that. And before I do that, I want to first check a little bit about how many of you are Aurovillians. I just want to have a sense of how, how many of you are Aurovillians living here. Wonderful. So the rest are really the visitors, right? Okay. And how many of you have been studying Sri Aurobindo's teaching? The reason I'm asking is because I will, based on that, I will assuming what you know, because otherwise I will have a lot of assumptions that in my, how many of you are studying Sri Aurobindo's teaching? Okay. Studying Sri Aurobindo's teaching. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. I just want to have a sense so that whenever I still start to use jargons, if you don't understand, please open up, you know, ask questions because we have many here people studying through Urbino. If I cannot answer this, people can, can answer. Um, so so my, my sharing of this morning has a lot of 
uh, ontological foundations based on his teaching. So I won't have time to talk about his teaching and his, his abstract knowledge on, on, on the world, so, but a lot of it is from there. So I hope I will not confuse you and, and assuming too much. So his talk on four aids in reaching perfection, he said, Yoga City, the perfection that comes from the practice of yoga, can be best attained by the combined working of four great instruments. Four great instruments. There is, first, the knowledge of the truth, principles, powers, and processes that govern the realization, sastra. Next comes a patient and persistent action on the lines laid down by the knowledge, the force of our personal effort. Utasha. There intervenes third, uplifting our knowledge and effort into the domain of spiritual experience, the direct just suggestion, example, and influence of the teacher and guru. Here, here he says guru can be inner guru, outer guru. <coughs> Last comes the instrumentality of time, gala. For in all things, there is a cycle of their action and a period of the divine movement. <coughs> he explains the detail of all these four aids in Synthesis of Yoga, the part one, the book, works, Yoga of Works. And actually, the whole journey of Integral Paradigm Conference that each year has been organizing here in Oroville, exactly the same journey, they're consistently searching, questing for that knowledge. And, cons and after we come back from this conference called Different Parts of the World, we will apply that in our own action to realize based on that knowledge. And each of us have our inner guidance, our guidance by certain middle mother, and doing that work, and we also are patient in that process because many of these things are not depending on ourselves, the time, the time, the instrumentality of time. I remembered when I was, before I entered into Mother Surabindo's teaching, I was so impatient, everything I want to do in one day, and I realized how ego was not realizing the divine instrument of the time. But when we can see the time is also a divine instrument, and live with that, and suddenly our work becomes so joyful, and not too much pushing and forcing. Okay, so this is actually, I apply with my own work, my personal work, but also with our designing of intervention with client. Do we also having, when client wants to reach certain perfection, they want to have innovative culture, or they want to develop global leadership, or they want to have business growth, sustainable growth, or they want to triple revenue in three years. They want to triple revenue three years, triple, triple employee people in three years. And with that type of knowledge, um, they could accomplish. With, not only that, they could also triple their impact with the social stakeholders. Yeah, so this, this is what I meant by integral. When I enter into business, Business, if you only go for money, you only go for profit, that is not integral. For me, it was partial. Something is missing. Because what Aurelio was talking about, that oneness. Because company is not functioning in isolation. When we enter the, their teaching, we, we suddenly realize, and living in that wholeness, you can't be only go for profit without looking at stakeholders, welfare, and, and social performance. Um, so I will, I will give you examples how I apply this at work. First, I want to show you a, a, a summary of a, a few points of integral, what does integral leadership, integral development for me, meaning for me when I work. So you, you have some principles behind how I apply them at work. So here, the first one is really integrating various parts of our being. We have mental, vital, physical, how that can be connected to the core of our inner being, psychic being in his language. And that is first step. When that is happening, how can we elevate the whole integrated being around that core center into the higher space so that we can be connected with higher force? So that is one principle 
that integral means for me is integrating all those parts of a being. The secondly, integral means for me is from inner to outer. So he says, that like Matai was saying also, consciousness is a power. So whatever we're doing will bring parts of personality into the work. So who we are will produce the work. Who we are will produce the corresponding life. There cannot be separation. So this is the, why the self-realization and world realization is so key. When I work with educational institutions, our traditional educational paradigm was first to educate citizens to be fitting into society, social efficiency. Yeah, so we have, you have to get a job, you have to have a literacy, but this self-realization is such a condition because when we have self-realization, we have far bigger power to the world realization. That's why the educational paradigm is shifting to looking at you know, developmental, development of individuals, the child, the, the people first, and using that, interacting with the world to have the world realization so that you can benefit. When you are bigger, then you can benefit society also. So from inner to outer, I will give you all examples. I want to list all this first to have it so that you know. And then the third one is integration means, integral means for me, it's really integral our personal work with organizational work and then our organizational work with society's work. It's really the concentric circles of sphere of influence. Whether we are aware of not, our consciousness working through that sphere. Just like we know from all this Indian tradition, uh, uh, spiritual heritage, we know that when we have negative, positive energy in us, it goes to some places too, without we are aware or not. Uh, the same with our personal work, without being we are aware or not, that goes to all the different stages. Um, but when we organize ourselves, our work consciously, we can consciously making interventions impact on those stages. And here is about the four powers of soul, four soul forces. Um, Sri Bindo mother talked about it, and um, also in, uh, in, in Synthesis of Yoga, and uh, the soul force he mentioned about, and uh, you know, the Maha, Mahashwari, Mahagali, Mahasaraswati, and Mahalakshmi. And this is the knowledge, the strength, courage, the power, and then love, harmony, interchange, I all clustered in one. Perfection in work and execution. So they are saying that we all have this soul quality. These are divine qualities. These are called divine, have created the world. And we, each of us is divine inside. We have that too. So when we know that that is our po per potential, when we work with ourselves and with others, how that can be constantly evoked, developed, and consciously. Um, both our personal setting and also at work, because Stuart Brindle says, says that organization has also soul, mind, body, and life. And he says, in human cycle, that culture, a country, has also a soul, mind, life, or body. So with that view to work with organizations, suddenly you work with such a living organization in constant this evolutionary process. And they have also these four soul powers, uh, being a consultant, being advisor. How can we tap into that, the soul power of the organization, the leaders coming out, so that they are constantly also having that perfection process. So all this will help us increase the self-awareness, self-knowledge, self-mastery, and self-generating. Why? For me, the integral development, once we are integrally centered, developed, that self-mastery will take place. Um, a self-mastery, self-knowledge, it's, it's all have different meanings. Self-generating is around how can we constantly transcending ourselves. Self-mastery is mastering of our all parts of our being. Obviously, obviously time has a lot of to do with the, the whole journey. Vladimir and yesterday we talked a lot on, uh, a few days ago, psychic qualities. So this is also one guidance in our work and in our own, building our own company too. And the four A's I mentioned, and the last one is around 
that perfection process is through these three movements of integrating, integrating all, all parts of our being, and ascending the whole to a higher place and widening, universalizing our work, a consciousness that Aurelio was, was talking about, so that, that globalness is also connected. So those, I, I put, there are a few more, but I thought this give you a generic background, how I've been applying for what, what integral knowledge means for me and how I've been applying, you guiding this. So for example, when we do work with organization, global companies come to us, they want to say our leadership needs to up, be upgraded and uh, we want to do transcultural leadership, global leadership, quality development, our leaders can really bring organization to a new level. We always say the client is a very relevant and important topic because if leaders are not growing, you cannot lead organization to grow, right? And so how I apply this integral dynamic in a leadership development program design or which knowledge will guide us to work with group of work for a three-year program or two-year program on leadership development because we know that when we want to integrally develop leaders, it takes years. It's not only traditional leadership development program. You go to, go to some management institute, you do some three, four, five, five days training, and after that, okay, you get some new insight maybe, but integral development is not taking place yet. So one map, one map get us. We make a lot of, we made a many, you know, maybe 100 maps, cognitive maps to guide us because what happens, as Urbino says, the four A's, when we work with any terrain of client, we have to know the terrain of that knowledge. The highest knowledge we can, we're capable of knowing and use that guide our work. Not unconscious because we're human beings. We're not like, you know, you go there, you just start from scratch and you, do, do, you don't think, right? So the mental quality as in the integral paradigm mentioned here is very much used by our work. Everything has some knowledge guidance. So, so we made, based on Sir Bindo Mother's teaching, we, we made some hundred, hundred maps to, to say well, in this situation, how we look at principles are the same, but entering to the client, because developmental stages of client is different, we have to listen so carefully with mind and heart to know what is starting point so that we apply it, not just through a map or do a standard trick. Hmm? Because development doesn't happen like that. So, so in leadership development program, we say, okay, what are the, in our research, we're constantly doing research also, and um, both teaching, we look at what are the leadership qualities needed for the future. And based on their teaching, but also based on what we have observed in the last 20 years, it's really these high five qualities of mental, vital, physical, of psychic. And our educational system produced leaders who can think, maybe, and using analytically using the mind. But mind is always partial, you know, but the hard quality, the quality of deeper will, the deeper value, the quality of emotional intelligence, sympathy, you know, love, compassion, and the quality of purposeful action. Because we see a lot of in the business, also in education institute, a lot of initiatives. But what is accomplished, maybe it's not sustainable. Because the action was not connect to the center, to the purpose. So here, this is one, one um, map guides us. So we look at, OK, um, when we develop leaders, we will look at the inner direction values, a will, a commitment of the people, the team, the organization, the individual. We don't call it psychic being because it will scare them away. But in the business, you, when you talk about will, it's already going to the deeper. You know, your will, when you ask people, what is, you know, what is your will? What do you want deeply? Not about your surface wanting, you know? And also values. Values can also trigger that deeper conversation with them. Then the mental agility, the perspective to shift, in the, the quality of being able to shift in perspectives can take context, can you transcend your mental knowing. This especially works in cross-culture setting because we're often we're so conditioned by our own national culture. And whatever we go, we go to other culture, everything in other culture was wrong. And because we are, not, we are mentally not agile and flexible enough. And to being to have that, that superness of, superness of the mental quality, but also seeing bigger, seeing perspective. 
emotional resilience, we talk about a lot of there. We also use modern business management theories practice like Daniel Holman, Goldman's work to support all this work because this work is really based on both ancient wisdom but also the languages that the business can understand. Behavioral effectiveness. So here has to do with all the physical part of communication, collaboration, you know, execution, purposeful action. And all this, you cannot see that all the, this is around the overarching self-mastery, self-knowledge, that the individuals having gone through the developmental journey, having this distinct, distinctions on all these four parts of their being, at the same time, having, being aware, having tools and practices that, you, that they are empowered to use. So they are actually, without knowing, they are, they are doing yoga, you know, consciously or unconsciously. Because Sri Aurobindo says, you know, everybody is on a spiritual path, knowingly and knowingly. The more we are conscious, the more we are collaborating, we are, we are, we are accelerating the, that process. So applying the timing. So what we do is because of this fourth city, we talk about the knowledge, you know. So in each terrain, we will bring into the knowledge in each in, on mental agility, emotional. What does that mean? What are the knowledge in the world? The latest knowledge that help the individual to grow, more than knowledge, research, or some teaching practices. People will also do a lot of meditation with us, sometimes Tai Chi. I learned from my mom, Qigong Tai Chi, and yoga. So it's all in the program, you're all touching all these part of, of, of programs. And in between, we do, we do also the breakthrough initiatives. So when they have developed all this, they need to apply it in real, real world. Otherwise, it's theory. So they get the chance to work on, they define breakthrough initiatives of their company. What are innovation the company is waiting for, the priorities? Using this, a new way of working to, to in that new context so that these leadership teams have a chance to really experiment with a new way of working, but yet developing the practices. Otherwise, it's all here. It's not lived. So this is one example of, of uh, how that integral idea in development of, of, of people. And we apply this constantly with our own all firm. So we said, whatever we are doing with client, we have to apply. And this, this very much, I will, I will skip this one, very much has to do with the second principle, second how we understood integral. It's really everything we do is from, from inner to outer. Inner one is whatever we we pre preach to client, we have to practice ourselves. And we have gone through that journey, we know the struggles, we know what is workable, what's not workable, but also our own attitude. You know, it's very easy to teach, you know, but it's, it's a true, I, I, I think true, true teacher or true, true scholar is really that teach what they live. Hmm? Okay. And this another principle we apply with integrate inner with outer life is because it's one life, whatever challenges comes to you, it is an aid for us to grow. So for example, if I have a conversation with a client and suddenly there's argument showing up, then immediately I know this is one life that's mirroring something inside me. Something in me is resisting this person or this organization. Therefore, the argument showed up. I need to work on myself. So constantly, this conversation brings us the mirror about what needs to be worked on. And this will apply with the companies at the same setting. So when company coming to us to say, oh, we have so much big challenge, that these two leaders cannot work together, the crisis, you know, we're almost you know, having the, the, the more low moral. And our principle is always, wow, this is an immediate opportunity because some untapped potential in this organization needs to coming out. This crisis creates that to the, for them to come out. If they want to be conscious, they need to work on this. Many organizations, they avoid. They just keep that, you know, and then become more um, downward spiral. Go for it. Then, yeah, the work from inner to outer, the self-realization and world, world realization is very much 
the, the previously. So for example, I won't, because our, our, uh, I won't mention the client name here because I remember this will be on the YouTube, right? Yeah, so, so because I, I'm always I'm working with them three years and all the detail of all those multinationals, I need to be very careful. Um, so one multinational company in, in, I want to give you. I'm sorry, but you say, but as long as you are not telling the clients and the intention of the clients, because you are the client, you are the client, Yeah, yeah. Let me make this point very clear. So, so if I hear about you, you are saying that business is serving other power. No, I'm just saying that the, the, the intention of the companies which you are serving, if you are not knowing the intention, yeah. the purposes of these companies, we are, we are Oh, very good point. This is what we have been paying attention to. Purpose, exactly. In what, in what, in what powers are these leaders serving? serving. And what? to my knowledge, most of the global companies now serve a purpose if it is oppositely direct, if direct against, if not hostile, yeah. to the supramental power. Yeah. To the power. Yeah. That's a wonderful question. Thank you to bring that up. I The first is... When we work company, we will examine the first type of purpose of what they are committed to. If they are committed to this way, we will work with them. If they are not, we are never force inclined, by the way, last 10 years of running our businesses, we have never entered into business development meeting, selling us, marketing. It's all them coming to us. Why? Because they want this. So we also work with only, because this work can only work with co-creative partnership, people are willing. Otherwise, you can't force them, you can't teach them, you can't preach, right? So this is, this is how we see, uh, how, how we work. So company coming to a multinational, so GE is, GE Healthcare, that can tell you about what they did. Philips, Nokia, Deutsche Bank, ABN Amro Bank. You know, all these Fortune 5 companies, we can debate, this long, will be long conversation about their roles in developmental process. Um, we don't know. True. True. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So let me. Yeah. So yes. So so here, here first. No, I haven't finished that. No, no, I haven't finished yet. Yes, yes, I, I understood. I understood. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understood. I understood. I will tell you later about all this also about because you know this complex topic. Um, um, I think so. That is that is one. The second one is when we work with multinationals, the leaders are there. They are questing for knowledge. They are questing for something must be working. They are, they are conditioned. They are conditioned by this corporate race, the financial gains, the self-interest. But this is not only a company issue. This is a whole society. Oh. Could you survive? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, oh. Well, because of the um, Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, I want. To, um, uh, can can I can I? Uh, yes, please. For a second, one second. Second attention. We de we deviate from that, which full. 
And we, um, I want to answer this question. Mm -hmm. Since you press on it three times, so you want this to be pressed, this is pressure. Huh? This is that disharmony we bring with the righteousness of the Sri Aurobindo's force. If you believe that the world has not to change and we have to impose the force, this is the result. If you want to change the world, you have to work from within. You have to change the values from within. You have to meet people who are seemingly hostile, but who are looking, who do not know even yet but they will be finding something which is true, a truer value. This is my answer. Yeah. Just wait for this, be patient with it, look for deeper change, for real change in the world. Supermind is emerging, emerging from within. This is the answer of Sri Aurobindo. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And, and let me, I think I, I want to come back also that in some of the words uh, with GE Healthcare, they totally changed their approach to enter China-India market out of the conversation we had in the room. So this is our work, our work not to help them to serve their partial purpose. To have in that conversation, how they are some of the in their own potential awakened so that they want to make a partial, they want to make a whole holistic approach. This is our work. This is what you've been wanting us to do in the world, right? Well, as long as we are right instrument, whatever we do, we can do, and the, the rest, we will leave it. We will leave to whatever their, you know, the divine intervention of time will bring this. So what happened in, I'll give you one example, because you asked about GE healthcare, general electric healthcare. They enter into China, India with this big profit-driven idea about, oh, China, so many hospitals, Government want to open up. So many upgrading, you know, after 30 years. They said, this is great for profit making. We went there, we go there. And then they try to export all these expensive MR, MREs, you know, all these hospital that will, machines that work, in, you know, in the US. But in Chinese context, the Chinese clinics and Chinese um, medical systems, it doesn't work. They were selling. So, forcing the people, local sales, sales people to sell, to sell. These people were conditioned to have to sell it because then I will get my bonus, but at the same time, I'm not helping my country. I saw people in the village, in the clinics, these people are not, not helped. Only a few big companies, a big, sorry, big hospitals in this larger metropolitan. And we had a long conversation in our development program about, you know, what is the purpose of your company? What truly purpose when it's created? Go back to that purpose that serves the societal needs. And that's why you have been prospering. This is, this is the teaching of Sri Aurobindo. When we are relevant, when we're in one with evolutionary movement, what society needs, our business will grow because we are serving needs. But when the needs were served, suddenly the business has its own ego. This is how human mind works, right? It wanted to be grow for the sake of the growth. Then they come to, into China like this. In the conversation, we rediscovered what is GE's healthcare's mission. They had big mission, you know, we help people to be much more healthy. Okay, if that is mission, how to live it really truly. So that in that process, they design a new initiative within the leaders. They start to do research into what is truly needed in China. And they collaborated with local Chinese clinics. And they had no new innovative products that made in China to serve developing countries. And then what happened to the salespeople, because they, their motivation, purpose are ignited. I'm working both to earn money, working for a multinational, but my work has impact. It has meaning. And, and they adopt this also the same process with India to say, gosh, good, gosh, some of these things can be also working. You see, so you bring this collective higher vibration into the workplace in a very business language, they're very much in business language around, you know, what, is, what are you coming here to do? You know, if you get up every day going to your work, what motivates you? Sales manager said, I'm not motivated. You know, I have money, but that money doesn't make me feel happy. That my content, I'm serving my country, my people, because I know how clinics are functioning. This product doesn't suit here. We can't blindly force, you know. And then there we also decide what are the important initiatives for GE to work, Chinese, work with Chinese government, to understand truly the government the, the policy regarding their vision about healthcare reform. You see, and then this become partner in conversation, and then whatever they are doing, they are 
helping holistically develop the country to say, okay, that we can do that. In the end, they, 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 they make more money. In the end, the Chinese lady who was promoted to become CEO of healthcare GE China. That's a result of the work to say, first one, a, man, a lady, the second, the Chinese, not a American, you know? So this is, this is the vibration that we can be an instrument of to create in any organization context we work. By the way, I, I, uh, I want to address, I don't know your name, what is your name? Petra. Petra. Sri Bindo says all is divine. Yeah, so organization, that client is also divine, but with the veil of apparent something else maybe, but it's also divine. Each one, if we, you know, when we're having that perspective to say, okay, we are all different developmental stages and how much, we don't know our mental knowledge is so limited to know what their, their contributions are. I was so grateful for multinationals coming into China because really stimulated Chinese development of opening up and this, you know, 1.3 billion people suddenly uh, open up and then Sri Aurobindo is talking about this. I want to share with this, this quote. So this country, we don't know their contribution, but everything has its purpose in, in this world, no? So this, this organization, this, uh, multinationals are there not for nothing. <laughs> the evolutionary process may, apparently it was needed. Definitely there are always intended, unintended consequences. This is what we are facing. This is the reason why we need to bring this integral knowledge work into the practice in our own life. But that is the journey, no? That's the delight, Lila, Sachananda, no? So what he was talking about is life is a process of interchange. All growth and existence is in relation to all surround us. Culture or people that reject that interchange would perish speedily. China has been, for so, so many 300 years after this great civilization, has really been declining for so long. What happened? Because they keep was so close. They are so arrogant. Huh? I'm so arrogant. Our, our culture. And because they reject the interchange and now the last 40 years of opening up, that interchanging process creates a lot of disturbance, definitely, and destruction, apparently, but also that is an evolutionary movement, integration, you know, unity. And he said a self-development from within, which is the greatest intimate power of our being. So that is the first, we have to have self-power those who live most powerfully in themselves can also most largely use the world, enrich it out of their own being. Hmm? He, he mentioned this in human cycle, psychology of social development. This profound principles in how individuals grow on this dynamics, the inner development and world development with others, self-realization, world realization, but also for cultures, countries. So sometimes when I enter into an organization, I just notice so many interchanges with external parties, I realize there's no inner core yet. There's no stable inner self-development. Then you're not strong enough to integrate things to work for your own use. And just like when we enter into marriage. I'm lucky, uh, two days, five days ago, we were 25 years married. We are still happy and uh, with each other. But just like in the marriage, People were thinking, no, no, I'm, I'm really not happy. Let me get married with Vladimir, then my, my problem will go. But then what happened? You bring your problems into that relationship and big mess, and then you delay the process of solving your own issue. And the same with organization. Always, when they want to do, when we work a lot with mergers acquisition process, you know, last of the biggest cement businesses in French and acquired the Swiss company. Coming together, they have 140,000 people in 90 countries. And then they were talking about integration, we should do that. And I realized that they, within their own company, there's so, few, so much disharmony. There's no solid core integrated, so they are aligned. When you are strong aligned, you are more you know, in charge and more positive, have more power to integrate other more positively. But when you are in such a stable, you know, stable situation, whatever comes, you're even more, huh? more um, uh, shaky. Yeah, so this is, this is, I want to share, yeah, timing, yeah. <laughs>
Okay. Okay, and I, I'm just coming to, I want to show one um, through window. So one aspect of this self, I want to give an example of self-realization, world realization approach. So one big um, multinational in electronics, they were doing a lot of global merge, mergers acquisition integration process, how we apply this with them when working with them. And instead of using consultants, they have been using McKinsey's and us to do this integration process, a merger acquisition integration process. They realized cons, uh, consultants are so expensive and we recommend them, why not you step, establish your own integration office? So they had a new venture in integration, new venture integration department, they brought all the leaders of the world in their own businesses who have experience in integration or knowing their businesses, they set up their own integration office, so become internal consultant. Once they set that up, they were not functioning. They could not help the business integrate. So they called us in to say, Tom, can you help us? What, ha what is missing? And I had a conversation with some of the leaders and the, 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 the group leader, very senior, very big intention, wanting to do this work well. What I noticed was that they were fighting among themselves. So the, the finance person coming from finance perspective have different view of how to set up this integration office. And the HR has different, the IT and the medical part. So they have business part and this support function. Then I said, from self to, I said, you are supposed to integrate, help your companies buying mergers acquisition integrate. But somehow you haven't been able to integrate yourself. Is that true? Yes, yes. I said, then are you qualified to do that integration with them? How do they listen to you? You are only preaching. Why don't you use this opportunity to start really sincerely saying you want to integrate among of yourselves or not? Or you want to fight? Or you want to be right? What is a commitment? So that conversation brought them into a new level to say, gosh, I'm not here for being right or ego. I want to really make one of these integrating office to be successful. So we work with them for one year with whole group about what integration mean, how to integrate. They have to start with integrate themselves, integrate with each other, and then they will learn tools to integrate, how to facilitate integration between the companies. And there are some tools are parallel, but there are some tools are not. What happens, many consultants, consulting company helping merges in integrations, they give some tricks, tools, techniques, which is helpful, but if inside people have no understanding experience, what is integrating of a group of people who are having total, maybe opposite viewpoints and culture values, conditioning based on national culture? How to integrate that? Because you need the transcendence to do that. And this is the inner quality to be able to integrate. I want to show the last one, then uh, I think the timing is... Uh, Yeah, we have a lot of picture, but I don't have time of the, yeah. So what happened is that the process of integration, whether it be company culture, individual person, or two countries working together, we work also with European Union and United Nations. A big deal in European Union, you know, that pr the journey, this people are really having differences, they are struggling with that. But the process is around how do you start with awareness of your own culture or your own perspective. The self-awareness comes in. But also aware of other parties. And then second is once the true awareness comes, the respect. The respect is hard quality, it's a yogic quality. If we don't work with in individuals on that hard quality, you cannot talk about integration. You can give the talk tools, but after later the, the fight remains. Then reconciliation. So reconciliation is integrating and leveraging differences, incorporating and transcend. And last step is realization, how to realize this. And Sri Bindo in, in, in Life Divine mentioned, but also in psychology, social development, human cycle. True reconciliation proceeds always by a mutual comprehension leading to some sort of intimate oneness. A compromise is a bargain, a transaction of interest between two conflicting powers. So company has a very good European Union that 
the conflicts are really work through compromises. What happens is you have lowest, de lowest common denominator reached, but not highest. And the reconciliation is this. And before we can have that in, 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 intimate one is, uh, whether it's on marriage level, whether it's on organizational level, I'm talking about so oneness of one, organizational level, company level, society level, the capacity to reconcile differences regards, re, requires one to really transcend the mind, but mind is not capable of reconciliation. Mind is only, you know, see different points of views. Yeah, so this is, some uh, very, you know, 20 years of work in this half an hour to share with some how I do this, how we do this, and how this works. So floor is yours for question. question. Natalia first. Can I give Nat Oh, you are first. Okay. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Yes, Natalia, I know you are, let's have lady first, yeah. And my issue is, um, in my investigation and observation of the business process was to be the truth or to imitate the truth. It's my, it's my issue. Mm. Uh, because when we are not truth in ourselves, we are just inspired for the truth. We we try to imitate it on the surface. Wonderful. And this is the yeah. issue of implementation, the knowledge. Yeah. Wonderful. I think that's exactly the, why I'm doing it. Because this work is sadhana. When we apply this work, constantly consecrating this work, Sri Aurobindo has talked, read these essays on Gita. It's all about karma yoga. And also in synthesis of yoga, if some of you are interested, how that work can be consecrated, that that this concern can be helped to sort out. Because not we are doing the work. Knowledge are all coming from that higher source. You know, if we could consecrate, do whatever we can do in most detailed perfection. Mother, I re in our company, we, we are really focused on detailed perfection, in perfection, beauty, in cleanliness, orderliness. So if we follow those things and consecrate, offer, and he explains how to offer. Um, you know, I also noticed work that I offer, always successful, always easy, smooth. No, the work that engages my ego, what you are talking about, always stumblings. Work offered, also financially benefit. Sorry, this is what mother said, wholeness is wholeness. You know, but I'm not driving for that financial result. But I'm driving for something else. But, but apparently that, hmm, that was really... Uh, Miraculous. I wanted to share uh, some of the observations that we had in a similar, uh, with the similar intentions in a different uh, part of the world. Yeah. In the United States, we've been facing this extremely. If there's a capitalistic country in the world today, that would still be the United States. And uh, we were talking about compassion in the context of business. Working with the Dalai Lama, Thich Nhat Hanh, uh, many leaders from India, many leaders from around the world, and we had the same challenges that uh, Petra and others referred to. And uh, we are like, oh, there's no way. I mean, the US military uses uh, Vipassana and um, yogic practices to uh, create these people who go and attack efficiently and kill efficiently. What a nightmare, right? So the question was, 
how do we reconcile this mm. because before we even go into that how do we reconcile the fact that the intention is not what we want and yeah. what we realize exactly as what you realize is that when we i was a part of the compassion in business conference at in uh, san francisco bay area and we had the same same problems we asked ourselves introspective saying why are we doing this but think about it this way uh, if we truly believe that the corporations are evil and we don't want to do it why are we using their products yeah most of us are wearing glasses that are made mm-hmm. by corporations the ceiling fans the cell phones the microsoft word the google searches i would not even know about this organization if i didn't follow it on google searches and all that if i really do not believe that they are doing good work i should not be using the fruits of their labor so as much as there's a lot of things that are not going well there are a lot of things that are going well the whole world is coming together from wechat to uh, you know so many different things like what you've seen in china i've seen transformation in india not everything is good not everything is right but so much transformation has happened because and along with all the negatives that we've seen so i just want to offer that thank you thank you Uh, thanks. Look, I understand, I think, where you're coming from, but I, I agree with some of us here that there are lots of good people in working in cooperation trying to make a difference, and thanks for, for being part of this. And where I know that from is a lot of some of our lecturers in social ecology at the University of Western Sydney have been involved in change agent kind of work and with Shell and other organizations. The result was that these organizations then got out and, and, and tried to pressure the, the government and other companies to follow suit to create a level playing field. Mm. The problem that they have is they do really good internal change, mm. but of course somehow the effects will be limited if governments then don't follow up creating a level playing field. So some of the efforts then sadly go down the gurgler because companies with seed of these with these sort of new values and can't exist in the marketplace so there yeah. is always that risk however there are also companies for example arab where in 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 sydney it's an international company that does sort of stati- uh, statics that did all the buildings in in china for the olympics for example um they've managed really well through consultants and and the whole spirit of mr arab to really create a very democratic system and they're utterly successful in these sort of new paradigms so they're really good companies out yeah, there yeah wonderful uh, may i make a small observation yeah, which is maybe necessary in, in terms of our studies is that um, the i'm just moving away from the uh, at the moment okay I may be shooting. Um, the, the, uh, the denial of that, um, as Jesus said, you know, nobody comes to the kingdom of my father. Uh, these rich people, um, it's easier to go through the needle uh, for the camel than for the rich man to get to the heaven. People say you don't need microphone, you put it aside every time. So, uh, it's easier, and if this, this argument is profound, and I was following it many years, being in Auroville. I was always denying, and I was always resisting. Mother didn't want money exchange in Auroville, and I was following it blindly and full-heartedly, and I still do, and understand why she says so. because money has to work for welfare or fall it's a universal force it's not the force to possess to be possessed by individuals it's a universal force now the any individual who comes to the possession of it or to the excess of it if he uses it for universal welfare he is doing that work that's basically it that's what i understood in these many years but the argument is coming from the mythical structure of consciousness now when we look into structures of consciousness it is that structure which recognizes our value as souls as psychic beings we belong to the divine mother we have want to return to our source 
And here we have this kind of powers, such as money, which is used by asuras, as we know it, as it is described very well in Sri Aurobindo. Yes, this power is in their hands today. It's not yet, you know, freed. It's not in the use of the divine. You are right. And this is a very, very deep um, concern of every one of us, how to make use of it in a different way. How to do it? You tell me. <laughs> and By doing it. And then we will walk the path. No? By doing it. Only... If you know the path, please tell us. She tries to find the path. And, and I believe her totally that she is looking for that path. Of course, there will be many issues which are not divine there. And you will have to figure out and make a choice. And this will be constant choosing, yes or no, right or wrong. Constant work. Constant, you know, alertness of the consciousness. Yeah. I never did this work. I am rather with you, no? <laughs> still. But I want to see it more integrally. I want to learn how to do things right. Yeah? You see, I, it's like this. Um, in such a world, we always have to assess yourself. Yes. Because you can use anything for any purpose. And the point I'm making is not so much about... I do not know enough about your work. That is true. But I have some experience of Sri Aurobindo's power and how the mother meant it, only just by reading and by experiencing. And there are two fundamental two fundamental things which differ so much with the normal use of power. This means this power, which is a supramental power, cannot be achieved. So all what I'm hearing here sounds to me more now, still it is something we can achieve. The whole presentation has to me a ring of that. It is something which is be given by them. It is something we cannot achieve. It is something which is coming to us through surrender. This is something very, very difficult to teach to multinational companies and just given me the example of the Deutsche Bank. Yeah. All? But, but just sorry to interrupt you. Sorry uh, to, I, I yes. think my goal was not to make these companies to be integral yogi. That's the point. Or to follow Mother Surabindo. No, my goal is whatever I can be instrument for their potential, their perfection, their developmental stages. You know, I don't want to mm -hmm. ask them to surrender. I, I want to surrender. I'm in the process of surrender. Yeah, I think, I think, I think, that's, I think in view of timing, I would love to have continuous conversation and share more about our work if you're interested. Definitely. Very yeah, Very please, short please, yeah, because I, I'm just looking at how much, okay. Do you mention Sri Aurobindo when you teach, when you work with him? Depends, depends on the audience, depends on the situation. For example, I mentioned Sri Aurobindo with many multinationals when working on, working on mergers acquisition. One way, I quote, what is a reconciliation? I will introduce him, I will bring him into the room, and people will ask, who is he? If people ask, I will talk about him. And people will not ask. And uh, so because the culture, also his definition on culture, when I work with c companies going global, how to integrate cultures uh, with, with government on the social development, how the culture has created, I will quote his work on human cycle. So yeah, sometimes they know, as I mentioned about, if they ask, depending on the audience, my intuition will tell me what to say about him. Is yogi, is philosopher, is Indian, you know, is a seer, or depend, depends. And oh, I will also introduce sometimes as an, a lived global cosmic citizen because he studied also you know all the West, you know all the East. So all his cross-cultural work is is very much transcendental, because I've been for more than ten years worked in the cross-cultural field, academically and business-wise. I work with leading academics in cross-cultural field, and whatever they are producing was partial; it's not working. When I read his work on foundation of Indian culture, all the profound foundations, pr principles, how to deal with cultures, cultural differences on national level, individual level, essentially, it's all revealed to me. I said, gosh, this is need to be doing. I want to give you one asking, you're asking questions when I bring to your window. Is when, um, when we were working, when we were working with European Union, 
Now they have this issue, this I have to, I can't stop saying what, what is the European Union, so I have to talk about European Union, but okay, this, some issues are well known. About all these national, the, the great, you know, the great wave of European Union is so much in Mother Siobindo's work. They are making great progress in working together, in creating a world unity without knowing, you know. So when we brought in to bring all this, this country, this, this senior officials working together and bring their national heritage, and without knowing, in, in some keep conversations, constantly bring up back about European Union's work. It's not to go for conformity, but to, to talk about this humanity's one. So I'm, I'm sharing these quotes with them and have long conversation, what does that mean? And brought out all their own inner knowledge that they could put up, up aside on their national egos, their national interests to work for the European Union, you know, the Union's interest. So what is this oneness? And then what is distinctions conformity? This is really giving them first distinctions. When mind is not understanding the differences, the, the cluttered, right? And his work helps. And then, then um, another work that really brought a profound change in the conversation when we were talking about how come, how, why some cultures, why this apparent coming together of European Union, United Nations, or mergers acquisitions, having these clashes, painful, and yet this is needed. And this is, I quote from Sir Bindo, and it was, it was always worked in the organization, and people were really starting to rethink, and because it's deeper resonates the, the truth of their being. And what Sir Bindo says in Foundation of Indian Culture, this last one I will stop, okay? Because this is not about me, this is about Sir Bindo. The encountering may, so that encountering of culture, he says, the encountering may act as an irritant force, awakening the inner being to a sense of discord or incompatibility, which is true, or that needs to be opened up. But if we don't want to consciously open up, something come outside has to disturb us, so we have crisis. Otherwise, we're not waking up. This is, this is the, the problem of human being, no? There is a struggle, the impulse and process of rejection, but even in this process of rejection, the energy of the beings are stimulated and helped by the attack. That was what happened with China in early open door policy. That's why the Chinese government are wise to say, let's do experiment, a few cities, let's do experiment with a few cities, not open up the whole China. It acts as a stimulus awakening a new action of the self-consciousness and a sense of fresh possibility. By comparison, by knocking at blocked doors and arousing slumbering energies. We don't, if we don't have interchange of shock, it's all inertia. The, the untapped potential is not coming up. It may come in a sense, it, can, it may come in, it, it, sorry, it may come in as a possible material to be reshaped to a form of the inner energy, reinterpreted in the light of its own self-consciousness. So then from here, we start to love those shocks, encounters, and coming working together because, wow, this has helped us, our nations, to be more conscious, more powerful, can be more growing. Time and its influence have not only passed over him, but carried him forward in their streams. We cannot go backward to a past form of our being, but go forward to a large repossession of ourselves to make a better living, more real, more self-possessed use of the intervening experiences. We can still think the essential essence, sense of the great spirit ideals of our past, yet the form, our thinking, our speaking, our development of them has changed by the very effect of new thought and new experiences. Yeah, I think, okay, you want to have the final say? Please. Okay. Are you taking enough for a change? 
it for me it was so wonderful extraordinarily wonderful how you presented everything combining the left part of the brain the non-feeling intellect and the right part of the brain which is the heart and you know in chinese mind and heart are one there's a vein going from the brain to the heart and back and then i saw your logo the extraordinary logo black elk an indian chieftain says Everything in our cosmos is round. And then you open up to the right. The right in psychology is the future. The left is back. In Hebrew language, the future is behind us. Would you know why? And the past is in because we cannot see the future, so it must be behind. And what we have experienced is in front of us. Then the next thing, you mentioned knowledge. Confucius talked about knowledge as benevolence, as kindness, as compassion. Isn't it beautiful? Business in Japanese, you're a business lady, an extraordinary business lady, even having this marvelous husband, 35 years. Congratulations again. Business in Japanese means keijai. I is Chinese love, is that correct? So in this wonderful Japanese word keijai, you have love plus to manage the world, to help the people. Isn't it extraordinary? Mm. To me, you set an example here with your extraordinary talk about the eff efficiency of Chinese people. They are extraordinarily efficient. Power, energy, they have everything to my mind. And I love Chinese culture very, very much. I'm finishing now, almost, but well, that's enough, thank you. Okay, yeah. I, I just want to say that this is really ongoing journey. You know, what I brought here is really share a personal journey, how we run our businesses, how we help other people to be, grow their businesses, organizations. Because what is the purpose of oral will? When mother wanted this oral will to be in existence, we are the ones who are experimenting, bring our inner work into the outer work. And instead of you, instead of coming here, or we are trying to do in the world. It, does, you know, it doesn't matter where you do it, but that's the reason I felt the relevance for us to share, to have con con constant exchanges around how we can learn, support each other, and inspire each other by this line of work and bring into this knowledge, this teaching, this work, into the mothers who are here with us, are working with us, if we are open to that. And our work used as an instrument for our own sadhana, because that is consecrated work, can be no more joy than, than other things. So that's the reason I felt every time when Vladimir wanted me to come, I come because that is the relevance, that we are on the same journey and co-creating together, and we can learn and inspire from each other. Next year, things will change, definitely will change, because our inner practices are changing, our way of being are changed, and our work cannot be remain the same. So that's why I just feel that it's really for chewing, joying, and rejecting, saying this will work, this will not work, and fine, but we are on journey. The time we will do the work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tom.